Um, just a, another good luck charm, I guess. Um, I don't know. It just started last week, I think, in Atlanta. And then, you know, last week's been crazy, so we've just been sticking with it. Who started it? Uh, Jesse Winker. And you're, you're, you're changing it up now. You did the number yesterday. Uh, that was Jesse as well. Um, yeah, I mean, it was just like a fun little thing. Next question. You go here in the middle on the right. Since the second half of the season, you guys have, the starting staff has put together an unbelievable string of, you know, quality starts. What was it that changed from the early part of the season where guys weren't going length? Um, you know, all just kind of feeding off each other. Um, you know, I think we all have the same goal in mind, making it to the postseason. Um, and just on like a selfish level too, just, you know, want to be great. Um, and I think that just, you know, feeds off each other. You know, Sevy does well, I want to do well, PD wants to do well, Key wants to do well. Um, and it just kind of like, um, you know, that team mentality where um, you just want to go out there and do it for the boys. And, um, you know, I think, uh, you know, at the end of the day, we're just feeding off each other and um, just having a fun time doing it. And as a pitcher, you know, when you see Kodai do what he did, no no simulated, I mean, simulated games, but no minor league games and comes right up in the thick of a playoff. As a pitcher, what do you think about that? It's incredible. Um, it's definitely not an easy thing to do. Um, you know, what he was able to do the last, uh, you know, his last two starts um, were truly incredible. Um, you know, he's just got the confidence to go out there and throw stuff for strikes. And, um, you know, he's got really good stuff. So, um, you know, he should. So, it's, uh, it was really fun to watch. Are you going to stay on the right, Mark? Um, you guys have been on the road for, for quite a while now. Just what kind of atmosphere are you expecting here tomorrow? Uh, yeah, I expect to be crazy. Um, you know, I was here in 22, and um, you know, it was definitely wild for sure. So, um, you know, this place can, can definitely be rocking. I mean, the uh, last couple of games here we had were uh, pretty amazing. So, um, yeah, I expect it to be a uh, pretty, uh, pretty fun atmosphere. OK, down here, we're going to go to Anthony, and, and then to Dave. You guys have gotten pretty heavy contributions from your left-handers all year. What, what, if any, sort of pride do you, Quintana, Peterson, take in you know, what you guys have been able to do? Um, it's just that team mentality, the starting staff, you know, I think just wants to be really good. Um, you know, we were saying it from the beginning of the year. Um, you know, I think we all like, believed in each other. Um, there's no reason why we couldn't be go out there and be great. Um, and, you know, having veteran guys like, Q um, out there leading the leading the charge and uh, just what he's been able to do this whole year has been uh, you know truly special. So um, you know, tried following those steps and um, yeah, it's been been a fun ride. Also, I your voice is a little scratchy. Are you feeling okay? And how how are guys just in general holding up from you know two weeks on the road, a lot of flights, a lot of short nights? <laughs> um, yeah, I mean the last week has been uh, unbelievable. Um, obviously, my voice is gone. I think it was because of Pete. Um, so thank you, Pete. Um, but yeah, I think it's, um, you know, these, everybody's here, everybody here has been doing their part, um, through the ups and downs and, um, yeah, I mean, it's just been a, been an amazing special time to go through this, like, stretch, uh, to end the season and, uh, start this postseason. You want to go, Dave? John, on the last weekend of the radio season here, you know, a bunch of guys were like, oh, we we kind of have a feeling that we'll be back here before the year is over. This isn't going to be the last time we're at City Field. And people kind of talked along with that, but it seemed like such a distant thing. Is there a sense of accomplishment that you guys actually made it back here? Because it did seem like a bit of a long shot back then when you guys were talking about it. Yeah. I mean, you know, the, to get to this point has been, um, you know, we've had to go through a lot of things uh, just to get here. Um, but at the same time, you know, sort of the belief in each other, in this team and this organization, like um, I don't think anybody in that clubhouse, you know, doubted that for a second. And um, you know, that's a special thing about this this group. We just keep believing, and um, you know, we're here. Uh, all we have to do is get our foot in the door, and you know, let's see what uh, see what happens. And you know, we're at, we're at that point. So it's been a crazy ride, and um, you know, this, this group is uh, you know something to do like that. Or something to do like that. You guys have played so well with like a road warrior mentality under those type of circumstances. When you come back here, do you feel 
rejuvenated? Do you feel stronger? Do you feel just because you got to go into you know home and back to your home stadium again? Is there something real tangible to that? Yeah, for sure. I mean, I think everybody could probably feel it last night when they got to sleep in you know, their own beds and uh, just be home for the first time in a while. Um, and, you know, I've all been talking about it, what this place is going to be like. And um, there's definitely a sense of uh, uh, rejuvency and, um, you know, the the road can be crazy, but, um, you know, so in this place and you know, I'm looking forward to you know, feeding off that energy. Okay, I'm going to go over here to, to Tim. On an individual level for you this year, how does your outcome, your body of work, compare to what you imagined as a best case scenario? I mean, the you know the ultimate goal for me is um, you know 200 innings and um, you know making all my starts and uh, 200 strikeouts and you know all these like cool goals. But at the end of the day, it's just a you know the North Star, something I'm striving towards. And um, even though I didn't accomplish some of those things. Um, you know, it's definitely um, my proudest season that I've ever had. Um, just from a health standpoint, um, you know, everything that I was able to accomplish. Uh, it's been a, a very fun season uh, for me personally. And, um, yeah, I'm, I'm very, very proud of what, what I was able to do. And separately, as somebody who has dabbled in bullpen work, what have you thought of the way Peterson has just bounced out there and come up big in a couple spots in the last past week? Uh, you know, what Petey's done this whole year, um, coming back from hip surgery, um, and then immediately, you know, making an impact uh, has been unbelievable. Um, you know, as somebody that's gone through the same surgery and, you know, how long it took me to, you know, kind of figure things out with my body, um, I know it's not an easy task. Um, you know, he's pretty much done everything, you know, the team's asked him to do, start, um, you know, relief roles these last couple of games. And, um, you know, he's stood up and, you know, taking the uh, challenge and, um, you know, it's definitely a very, very uh, special person to do something like that because it's not easy. And, uh, you know, hats off to him because he's done an incredible job doing it. Okay. Go behind you to Fitz. Sean, they've got a lot of veteran hitters in their lineup that you've faced plenty of times, I'm sure, multiple spot stops and, um, and then in your division, you know, this year. So what's the biggest challenge about facing guys and facing a team where, you know, they've seen a lot of you? Yeah, I mean, they, you know, they know what I've got. Um, they got all the scouting reports. They got all the information, um, you know, so do we. And, um, you know, I've gotten got multiple times by them, um, just the way it goes. And, um, you know, the playoffs are a different beast. And, um, you know, at the end of the day, it just goes down to competing and, um, just throwing your best stuff out there and, um, you know, trusting the guys behind you, um, you know, that we're going to do this thing. And, um, you know, obviously it's a very, very talented group over there. So um, it's not going to be an easy thing. But, um, you know, at the end of the day, I believe in my stuff and um, you know I can go out there and, um, you know, help this team win. And that's uh, just all I'm trying to do. Okay, take one more over here, Mark. All right. I'm just following up on that. Uh, a couple of years ago, you had a, a rough playoff game against those guys. Just to what degree are you a different pitcher now, and is that any added motivation for you? Um, I would say motivation. Um, you know, it's a thing of the past. It's obviously, wasn't a very good outing uh, for myself. Uh, and, uh, yeah, I mean, I think about it. Um, and, you know, I'm not the same pitcher I was then. They're not the same pitchers that they were then as well. Um, so, like I said, at the end of the day, you got to go out there and compete. That's all they're trying to do, too. And, um, you know, just throw your best stuff and, you know, we'll see, see what uh, you know, happens out there. Thanks, Sean. Okay. Carlos Mendoza will be in shortly. Okay, we'll open it up for questions for Carlos. We're we'll going to start here with Mike in the front row on the left. Carlos, what's it going to be like to finally play at home again <laughs> and in the playoffs? Uh, great. You know, it uh, feels like we've been on the road forever. Uh, but the fact that we're here uh, and we have a great opportunity to not only be back, but playing meaningful games, playoff games here in October in front of our fan base uh, is, is exciting. It's awesome. Uh, I can't wait for tomorrow. You talked about... Uh, 
before you guys left um, that last home game against the Phillies about fully expecting to be back here. I mean, did you had to go through a lot to, to get back to this? I mean, does it feel like uh, an accomplishment just that you're back here? Yeah, look, yeah, obviously we're back, you know, and we knew it wasn't going to be easy. You know, uh, we had to go through a lot, not only traveling, but playing good teams. We needed to get to the playoffs then advance, you know, and win that wild card. Uh, so, but I, I always have faith on the, on the guys, on the players. We continue to believe uh, and w we took it one day at a time, one series at a time. And that's what we will continue to do. And here we are back in City Field and uh, with a tremendous opportunity uh, to win a series and keep going. Can we see here on the on the right here, in the second row, Carlos. You know, you've always had that even keel that you know things are going to turn around, and every manager has that. It's that speak when you're in a slump. What is it about this team that they were able to respond to that and do what they've done? Um, I'm going to go back to say we got good players, we got great people, people that they believe, they believe in each other. Uh, there's a there's a lot going on behind closed doors that makes that that group such uh, such a special group man. Uh, they care um, and they just yell together and you know they come long ways. You know I think the fact that we got off to a, such a rough start and we came through, you know we had to face adversity from the very beginning. Uh, that I feel like made that group uh, stronger. You know. Um, and, you know, we keep taking punches and we keep finding ways to get back up, uh, whether it's in-game, whether it's after a tough loss. Uh, and those are the expectations, you know, like we'll show up the next day. We continue to be ourselves. We continue to care about each other, to continue to prepare. We continue to go out there competing and see what happens. Uh, but that's a special group there, quality players and quality people. And secondly, the, the at-bats over the last month, month and a half, are very reminiscent of 2022. And the one constant between the two of them is Eric Chavez was a hitting coach then. And it looks like the two-strike approach is back. What has Eric Chavez meant to this group as far as hitting? Yeah, a lot. But he also had really good players. <laughs> In order to be a good coach, a good manager, you need good players. And we got a lot of them. So not only Eric Chavez, but Jeremy Barnes. And the whole group, um, I think they work really well together. Uh, their ability to listen and uh, bounce ideas of each other. Um, and I think it comes down to players going out there and executing. You know, we can sit here and, and, and go over hitters meeting and talk up all we want, but you got to go out there and do it. And they're doing it. So credit to the players, credit to the coaches for being on the same page um, to challenge each other and uh, putting together some uh, good game plans. But, uh, you know, at the end, they, they got to go out and do it. And um, just proud of the whole group. Um, not done. We still got work to do, but uh, it's exciting with the way we are approaching some of these elite teams with elite pitching, uh, and it's going to continue to be that way. You know, we're facing another good arm tomorrow. Their bullpen is really good, uh, so yeah, they're going to make adjustments, and we have to be ready to make adjustments as well. But hell of a job by Chavi, hell of a job by Barnsey, and again the players. Okay, we're going to go over here on the left. We're going to go to Dave. Carlos, the last time you guys were at City Field was so long ago that you really weren't sure what you might get out of Francisco Lindor. He was still going through a lot of the, the stuff, the diagnosis, the shots. From where he's come from then to now, did it just far exceed what your expectations? I know you were cautiously optimistic, but it seemed like you weren't sure at that point. 100%. Um, and for him to get to the point to where he's at right now, like he still feels it once, once in a while, but he's in a way better spot. So you got to give him credit. You got to give the training staff, you know, a lot of credit because there was a lot of hours. There's a lot of work that they put in to get Lindor not only uh, in a position where he was a player, but in uh, an elite player, you know. Um, yeah, you know, last time I was here, I didn't know if, if I was going to have a player. I was going to see Lindor. And not only we saw him, but the way he's playing, the way he's performing. Um, so, yeah, it wasn't easy, but... Um, they grind through it, and like I said, you have to be proud of him. And he has to be proud. The whole group's got to be proud because there was a lot of lot of work behind it. Well, I mean, and to think that you would have tried to do what you did without Lindor, 
seems kind of impossible now, right? <laughs> After what he's done for you guys during that during that time. Yeah, I mean, he's he's the MVP, you know, and not only what he does on the field, but what he does behind closed doors. I mean, you know, he cares so much, he wants it so much, it's just in the joy, you know. I think the hardest part for me was not seeing that smile <laughs> when he was going through it, when he wasn't a player for us. And not only that he wasn't a player for us, that he wasn't progressing the way he would like to. And that for me was kind of like, mm. Uh, but, man, um, like I said, proud of him, and I'm just glad that he's playing and playing well for us. Can we go to Jess right here in the middle? When you look back at these last two weeks, how do you think that being on the road for so long brought this team closer? Um, yeah, I think not only the last two weeks, but I'm going to go back to the month of August where we went twice to the West Coast, uh, you know, and yeah, you do so much together, you know, whether you're on the plane at the hotel, you go out and, and, and have dinners when you, you, you're allowed to, um, you just uh, come a lot closer, you know, but this is a group that whether we're home, whether we're on the road, like they stick together, uh, they find a way to just um, as a group, continue to have conversations, continue to keep it loose, uh, continue to push when they have to, um, and taking the losses and getting back on the bus as opposed to everyone going in different places. And you continue to talk about the game and what are some of the adjustments that you have to make the next day in order to, to get the, the job done. Uh, I think it's helped, but I'm excited to be back. I'm, I'm glad we're back home now. And as a manager, how rewarding is it when you see that chemistry that's being built off the field translate, obviously, onto the field? Yeah, that's what you want, you know. As part of a, as a manager, as a coaching staff, that's that's the goal, that you got to get that group to believe in each other and, 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 and have each other's back. And uh, messaging from day one in spring training was that, that we needed to be a family. And everybody's going to go out and say it, you know, but you got you also got to do it. You got to work for it every day. Um, and they've done it, you know. Um, like I said, even through when we were going through those tough days, uh, you could see it that, you know, it was something special. And uh, here we are. So you just got to continue to do the same thing we've been doing. Hey, Danny, in front, Tony. Pete Alonso has a very long and successful track record against Nola. Uh, he's known him or faced him since going back to college. How much stock do you put in that? How much do you think those things matter and, and show up in big games? I mean, they're familiar, but as much as Pete knows uh, Nola, he knows him well, too. And, you know, this is a game of adjustments. And big league players and really good big league players, they are able to do that. I'm pretty sure Nola is going to try to make some adjustments, and Pete's going to have to make some adjustments, and he will. So I think he's you got to go out there with a plan. Nola's going to come out there with a plan, and let's see what happens. But uh, it's a it's a playoff game. Uh, it's, uh, it's just different, you know. Yeah, there's history there, but uh, it's, like I said, we got to be ready. Pete's got to be ready, and he will, um, to adjust when he needs to. Okay, going to go Tim on the left there in the middle. Coming into the playoffs, how did you and Jeremy Hefner envision David Peterson's role? Uh, we'll see. Uh, I think we're going um, day by day, game by game, how he's bouncing back. Um, he's coming off today's, what, he's going to be his second day. Uh, we got to see how he's feeling tomorrow. And if he's available for us out of the bullpen, then, you know, we'll use him if we need to. Uh, but he's flexible, he's fluid. Um, so if we need to make a start um, and he's fully rest up for it, um, we will use him that way. But I think it's just, we're, con we're going to continue to treat it as, Day by day, game by game, and if he's available, and if we need, if we feel like we need to use him, then we're gonna use him. With him becoming or serving as a utility pitcher of sorts lately, maybe moving forward, what sort of boost is that to a bullpen that does have some question marks? Yeah, uh, it's huge, you know, especially from uh, from the left side, you know, having another lefty there, um, but a guy that he's been one of our best starters, right? And then uh, we ask him to get a save. <laughs> um, to clinch and win a wild card series. Uh, then a day later, we're asking him to come in the middle of a game and give us a couple of innings. He ended up giving us three 50 pitches, kept us in the game. Big reason why we ended up winning that game one. Um, so yeah, I think he's just having a feel. And um, Pete has got to be honest with us. You know, uh, not trying to be the hero here. Uh, health is important. We will protect him. Um, 
because again, this is a starter that we are now putting in, in, in a bullpen role. But again, let's see how this series unfolds and we'll go from there. Hey, down here in the front. Carlos, in all your years of baseball, have you ever been involved with or seen a, a string of games like last week? No, no. It's incredible. I think this is, you know, you could write a book, you could make a movie. Uh, you know, you go back to that game in Atlanta, you know, the way we won uh, to clinch a playoff spot. Then we go to play in a, a wild card series, and the way we came back and won the series. Um, the first game in Philly, uh, you know, uh, being shut down for eight, eight innings and then come back and getting the W, and then the way we lost the game yesterday, you know. So uh, we've been in the good side and in, now in the bad side. Uh, incredible week. Um, but that, that's what makes baseball such a uh, beautiful sport and probably the best sport. So um, you can predict baseball, man, and you just have to enjoy it. And uh, there's going to be ups and downs, and uh, that's part of it. Um, and now here we are, you know, uh, getting ready uh, to play here in City Field, and hopefully we continue to write our, our own story. Okay, here on the right. Hi, Carlos. So how is Senga feeling after the last outing? Uh, good. He's, uh, he continues to feel good. He's here now. He's... Uh, doing everything that he has to do to continue to feel that way. Uh, so progressing well and in, uh, in a good spot. Maybe go to Mark back there. Following up on that, do you think he could be an, an option for, for game five? As uh, so for right now, uh, he's trending in that direction. Yeah. Very separately. Um, it seems like whether you guys pitch to Bryce Harper or pitch around him, he kind of finds a way to, to do damage. Just what makes him so uniquely difficult to get out? He's Bryce Harper. <laughs> you know, he's a really good player, a really good hitter, man. Like, he's ready for always for that first pitch. He's going to attack, uh, and if you make a mistake, he's gonna make you pay. And not only uh, in the zone, but if you're closing off in the zone, he's <laughs> he's still gonna find a way to put barrels. So, um, great hitter. Not only with Harper, that's what makes that team a dangerous team, man. Like, the guys in front of him, the guys behind him, has a deep lineup. Uh, he's versatile. Uh, they can hit the ball out of the ballpark. Uh, they use the whole field. Like, um, there's a reason why they won the division the way they did, um, and not just because of Harper. They got a lot of good hitters. So, you want to take the last one right here? Uh, Fitz in the back. Mindy, will um, regardless of tomorrow's outcome, will Quintana start Game Four? Whether you guys are up two one, down two one, doesn't matter. Quintana is going Game Four.